A lot of the work I do is uses appropriated language, so a lot of this stuff is taken from uh, search results. Okay, and I have a whole some of the I wrote this book called Your Country Is Great, which uses searches of X is great, so an alphabetical order from the CIA fact book, and then. And so I did, this is the first third of the globe, it's from Afghanistan to Guyana, and then I have some countries that don't come up, or some uh, that's gonna be in a book called Disputed Regions, because, you know, they're still not there yet. So Chechnya is great. The war in Chechnya is great start of great end. Chechnya forever. And Russia is only for a while, Allahu Akbar. Kurdistan is great. Kurdistan is great country. Don't know about visas, etc. But Kurdistan is great, people friendly, etc., etc. Relatively safe, always keep your eyes, ears open, but you should be good. Kurdistan is great. It should be supported hugely, among other things. It would show Europeans what Turkey is like. <laughs> Garabagh is great. Adoption of UN resolution on nagorno karabakh is great diplomatic and political victory. Azerbaijani adoption of UN resolution on nagorno karabakh is great. Although the need for mine action in nagorno karabakh is great, there have been few organizations working in this region since the 1994 ceasefire. I think your reference to nagorno karabakh is great evidence of your inability for neutral discussion or amends on Wikipedia. I think you should strongly rethink your agenda for editing on Wiki. Karabakh is great diplomatic and political victory. Okay, I'll come back to Palestine is great. Uh, you know, Egypt is great, people. <laughs> Egypt is great, full of history and mystery. Egypt is great, Egypt is here, Egypt is trying to obtain nuclear, Egypt is the best team. In a nutshell, Egypt is great in the winter months when the temp is better. Even the modern Egypt is great. The Nile is beautiful and the pyramids are fabulous. There are some problems about Egypt which annoy most Egyptians. Also, this book was published before the revolution, obviously, this book was three years ago. Overall, though, Egypt is great, and I can't wait to go back and see my future family and friends. Egypt is great all year round if you go to the Red Sea. There is a lovely sea breeze in the summer, so it's nowhere near as hot as inland. Egypt is great. I lived there for a year and I'm going back. Cairo is the city that never sleeps. It's so alive. I just love to look out the car window. Egypt is great. Sure, there is always a little chance something could happen to you anywhere in the world that you travel. But Egypt is, is by far safer. Egypt is great for the archaeologists because the hot, dry climate helps preserve artifacts so well. But the hot, dry climate can be unbearable. I agree Egypt is great and has a great history. But we shall not forget that it is not only Egypt that is so high up. Mysteries of Egypt is great to watch on a gigantic six-story screen. Egypt is great. Certain days feel like death, but I'm staying alive. <laughs> Attacks outside Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza are out of character for them, and the potential damage to their relations with Egypt is great. All this talk about development of design technology in Egypt is great. I really admire it, but can anyone suggest a method for implementing these things? If Egypt is great, it is because God has made it so, not Pharaoh. If Assyria is brought down, it is God's judgment, not another nation's power. Hey, what's up? I think that Egypt is great, and I think it's very clear, clever, the way the Egyptians mummified people. <laughs> Though it's very yucky. Mm. 
All in all, Egypt is great and a fantastic place to visit any time but in the summer. I feel that I adequately saw about half the country and was pleased. The contribution of Egypt is great and meaningful and permanent and we are over some arguments. I can't remember a more fruitful cooperation. You know what's amazing is the internet is largely English. So, uh, so originally when I thought, because uh, a lot of my work deals with nationalism and I thought if you put all these great countries together, they would cancel each other out like, and, and people would kind of get over themselves. But the, the, obviously, and that's one way, that's one reason I started the project. And then, um, but obviously the word great is used in so many different ways. And it's already, as if you ever teach, if you teach writing, you know, great is a very empty, empty word. You know, it doesn't really, you know, like this, this is a great novel. It means the student hasn't read it, you know. <laughs> um, and, so, and so that's another thing. And um, so, and, and one way I think, it was, I think, with the first poem, Afghanistan is great, and, and I didn't write it in alphabetical order. I started after the 30th poem, doing the whole entire globe. And it's with Afghanistan that I really realized that the book could be a little more than just a gimmicky thing. I mean, but a lot of people still think it's a gimmick, which it is, but gimmicks are good, you know. So here's a, the best part of the gimmick. <laughs> Afghanistan is great. Afghanistan is great, but much smaller than previously assumed. <laughs> the need for education in Afghanistan is great and must be met quickly. Need for food in Afghanistan is great. Well acquainted with unique problems facing Afghanistan. The need for tough, dependable, locally repairable wheelchairs in Afghanistan is great. A mountain, an airplane, aviation in Afghanistan is great fun. Pipeline via Afghanistan is great. There is no question that Allah's knowledge and love of Afghanistan is great, even though he regrets the limits of his understanding. Okay, and then it's my first book, Syria is in the world. You know, it's funny because my grandma was born in Syria and as, as part of the Armenian diaspora, uh, you know, the result of the Armenian genocide by the Turks. And, and the terrible thing that happened is when she actually returned home to Armenia, the Soviet Republic, my grandfather was arrested soon after for being a nationalist. And so they spent a lot of time in Siberia, uh, as, as in the gulags, for five, six years. Two of my aunts were born there. And she never really could deal with the Armenians after that. She, she called Syria her homeland because you know, the people had been so nice to her. And so when, after America entered or was kind of trying to kind of persuade the American public that Osama and Saddam were kind of really linked up and I was very against it, um, they were all, at the same time they were pushing Syria too, like might as well just take care of that regime there, which we're doing now, thanks to our phony Facebook accounts. Um, but anyway, so, and, and I was really offended by this and because and, most Americans really don't even know the history of this part of the world and how we've just screwed it forever and we're still doing. And I just remember my grandma and so I wanted to kind of do this book and so I'll read some of the last piece which is called Syria's in the World. And this largely the text is taken from the Syrian Tourism Ministry website. So. Obviously, it's extra nationalistic, so bear with me. Syria is in the world. I think, you know, I'm just going to read all, the whole thing, so screw you guys if you don't like it. Uh, it's not that long, but I'll just stop right after. <clears throat> Every person has two homelands. Syria is the cradle of civilizations. Civilizations emerge as a product of Syria's indigenous people. Others, civilizations, came from abroad, establishing contexts of exchange, reaching the most fertile interaction known to humanity. Thousands of archaeological sites attest that history is condensed in Syria, the greatest small country in the world. Syrian people are friendly and peaceful. 
All possible individual personalities in human beings hold in possession one more than one area set aside to be a state for a people of a particular national, court, cultural, or racial origin. Syria is the most beautiful destination in the world. Syria ha made copper pliable. Syria's long, long history invented bronze. Syria's glory is not only in the present. If you are interested in history, then Syria is the most under-advertised important country in the world. Any visitor to Syria where crime rate is low will say the same thing. Syria, and, and I'm sorry, you guys know what's happening there, right? Like the, the bot party is killing the protesters. So, uh, anyway, excuse me. <laughs> Pardon the introduction, <laughs> interruption. Um, Syria is one of the most beautiful destinations. Syrian people are peaceful. Syrians were first to wear hand weaved cotton and silk cloths. This is why, rightfully, Syria was called the cradle of civilizations. Modern man is indebted. The Silk Road caravans were not only for carrying goods. Nature in Syria is very diverse. We are adding new pictures, ranging from forests in the northwest, where there are an abundance of palaces, to the beaches on Syria's Mediterranean coast, where there are an abundance of palaces, and Syria's bread baskets in the northeast and the south, where there are an abundance of palaces. Syria's streets are among the world's safest. The crime rate is very low, and people wander the streets in Syria's nights. Syrian people are friendly. If you are interested in history and historical monuments, you cannot miss Syria. There is a monument around every corner. There is no civilization in the East or West throughout world history that didn't pass through Syria and leave a mark in Syria, as well as being affected by Syria, Syria's long, long history, a cradle for civilizations. Food in Syria is very tasty and famous. Syria is often the largest small country in the world. Syria has a long, long history. The bronze civilization came. 10,000 years ago, agriculture began. Houses, not caves, became man's dwellings. All possible individual personalities and human beings hold in possession one more than one areas set aside to be a state for a people of a particular national, cultural, or racial origin. Syria is one of the destinations in the world. Today, we still admire fabric. Syria is the cradle of the great civilization. The accomplishments of her ancients are renowned. Syrian people are friendly and peaceful. The Islamic conquest only confirmed Syria's Arab identity, gave a tense to the land. It was in Syria that soil was tamed, settlement commenced, civilization emerged. Journey through Syria is journey through time. Silk Road caravans were, carry were for carrying go goods. Houses became man's dwellings. Man embarked on journey of self-discovery. He observed heaven and sang hymns, tried his hand at drawing and sculpture. These ancient arts are found all over Syria. You are interested in monuments. Syria also produced the world with another discovery. Copper was made pliable and bronze invented. The bronze civilization came. By the Euphrates and elsewhere, there was an abundance of palaces, temples, and murals reflecting cultural and commercial activity. Syria is in the world. Syria's visit is worth visiting the world. Human beings making up a group or linked by a common characteristic or interest native to or inhabiting Syria are not hostile, but in a state of calm and quiet. Syria is beautiful. Successive ways of migration make it beautiful. And if you are interested in monuments, you cannot miss Syria. The Arab Peninsula gave an Arab identity to Syria, and it managed to withstand invasions, invasions by Hishites, Persians, Greeks, and Romans. The Islamic conquest gave a sense of the land, adding new pictures and additional information. Syria is now the most beautiful world. Today, we admire fabric on Syrian women during happy events and occasions as a witness of the old cultural interaction embraced by a land called Syria, whose visit is visiting the world. Natives or inhabitants of Syria preceded all others in time in using an, as an article of clothing or adornment a soft, fibrous, usually white substance composed of hairs attached to the seeds of a plant related to the mellow, mallow and fine, strong, lustrous protein fiber produced by insect larvae, usually for their cocoons, cocoons produced on hand-operated looms. You know, those are... 
definitions of the sentences. Is that obvious? Did I just state the totally obvious? <laughs> I would take a sentence I had made up earlier and I would define every single word in it and make paragraphs out of them. You know, because I'm so cool. Okay, okay, okay. Almost done. The strategic, I, I feel like I've never read this piece all the way through and I feel like I have to do it for my brothers and sisters. Um, the strategic importance of Syria is due to her unique position as a meeting place of Asia, Africa, and Europe, and as a crossroad between the Caspian, the Indian, the Black, and the Nile waters. Through Syria, food in Syria is famous, lay the silk route which led from China to Dura, Europos, from Palmyra and Homs to the Mediterranean where for thousands of years Syrian seafarers had ridden the wave in their enormous fleets with gleaming white sails. This geographical position lent distinction. Syria has a long, long history not only as a trade and caravan route, but also a, but also a weave of diverse ideas, beliefs, talents, and cultures. Syria absorbed heaven and sang the earliest hymns. A journey through Syria, because it managed to withstand, withstand invasions, is a journey through time. Syrian people are friendly and peaceful. Syrian seafarers had ridden waves with gleaming white sails. Syrians offered man his alphabet. Human beings natives to Syria are not hostile, but in a state of calm and quiet. Okay. You can buy the book and read the rest. Thank you. Thank you.